Hey guys, after a lot of server stuff, let's talk about some LED stuff again, like these. Recently, Dr. Z's streamed about a new open source project that's been gaining popularity, and that's WLED. WLED is software for the ESP8266 or ESP32, and it's used to control addressable LEDs. It has an easy app for your phone and can do all sorts of effects easily. That sounds like the perfect match for my Quinn LED Dig Uno. So let's take a look at that and I'll try and make this into a little tutorial on how to install WLED in combination with the Quinn LED Dig Uno. <laughs> Well, as you can see around me, I've already been tinkering with all of this for a little bit, and it's been working quite well. For the people unfamiliar with the Quinn LED Dig Uno, it's an LED controller board I designed that you can build yourself. I'll uh, show some close-up footage. You can use an ESP8266, like this Wemos D1 Mini, or an ESP32, which comes in the same form factor, and you can put it on top of the board and it provides some nice features to run addressable LEDs above what maybe your bedboard circuit would do. Some of its main features are that it has an onboard fuse combined with reverse polarity, input and output protection. So if you make a wiring mistake or a short circuit situation happens over time, your house won't burn down but instead the fuse will just pop. Next to that, the board is also suitable for the ESP8266 and ESP32 in the Wemos D1 Mini form factor, as I mentioned, but it's also suitable for 5V and 12V LED strip, so you can use the newer WS2815 for instance. It also has an onboard very fast level shifter, so everything from a WS2812B or SK6812 strip to an APA 102 strip gets the right data signal voltage, which can matter in larger projects or with longer wires. On top of that, it has easy screw terminals to attach your wires, allowing up to 15 amps through the board, making wiring up everything a bit easier. It also has some beefy capacitors, keeping power nice and stable and preventing the inverse current of death towards your LEDs. Then it also has some broken out GPIO pins, but Basically, it, the features are a bit too much to really go into here. I have a dedicated video about that, and I have some dedicated articles on quinled.info. There you'll find all the information, as I mentioned, including board component lists, soldering tutorials, and also information about LED strip, what to buy, and stuff like that. Okay, enough about that. I've prepared some boards, and let's go through the installation of WLED together. To get started, let's go to the WLED GitHub page and download the latest release of WLED. The releases are pre-compiled versions where you don't have to have any knowledge of Arduino and stuff like that. Then we're also going to need a tool to flash our little ESP8266 or 32 board with. We're going to use a little tool called ESP Home Flasher. Again, there's a GitHub page with a release on it and we just download the right version for our operating system. No worries, I'll have all of this linked in the description below and in the written part that goes uh, with this video on QueenLED.info. Okay, now we connect our ESP8266 based Wemos D1 Mini to USB and proceed to open the ESP Home Flasher. There we select the correct COM port and then the WLED bin file we just downloaded. Then it should be as simple as pushing the flash button and waiting a little bit. While it's flashing we can already prepare the next part and that is on our phone. In my case that's an Android phone so I open up the Play Store and I look for an app called conveniently WLED. Once it's done flashing and installing the software to your phone, disconnect the D1 Mini from your computer's USB port 
and insert it into the Quinn LED board. You can already have some LEDs connected to it if you want. In my case, I have the Quinn LED Dig Uno connected to one meter of SK6812 RGB W LED strip with 144 LEDs. This is five volt LED strip. So I've set the voltage jumper to five volt. I've connected the five volt power supply and I've set the GPIO jumper to two. Once it powers up, if everything is connected correctly, it should show some LEDs of the LED strip in orange. Unless you have an RGBW LED strip like I have, then you'll see all kinds of funky colors, but we'll correct that later. Now, take your phone and open your Wi-Fi settings and you should see a W LED access point listed. Connect to it and it should show a pop-up to ask for sign-in information. There, we fill in our Wi-Fi name and password and reboot the module. Your phone should now automatically connect back to your own Wi-Fi network, so let's open up the WLED app. There, you should be able to hit the Add button and then use the Scan functionality to find a new controller. If it doesn't find it, you can always check your router to see which IP the module got and add it manually. Once that's complete, you should see the WLED controller in the overview. Let's open it and first configure the amount of LEDs we have and the amount of power available. In my case, that's 144 LEDs and I set power to the maximum because I have a very beefy power supply connected. Then I need to tell WLED that I have RGB W LEDs which will add an additional white channel and also make sure that all the colors function correctly on the strip. Okay, and well, for a basic install, you're done. You now have an LED strip you can control using an app on your phone. But let's take a closer look at some of the effects and settings you can do and uh, show you some examples. For instance, let's change the effect to the color waves effect. And then we can also change the speed of the effect or the intensity, which changes how it looks. Then we can also change the color or color palette that the effect uses. Scroll down where we can choose a preset palette of colors the effect will use. Let's change it to red and blue. That's looking nice. The last thing I wanted to show is that you can edit presets which will then be saved to the module and you can recall at any later time. Now, these are only a few of the functions WLED can do. It has some great features, such as being able to sync multiple controllers or allowing control using MQTT and thus through Home Assistant and Node-RED. But that is too much to go into during this video. Maybe I'll cover some of those features in the future because it's also supposed to have E1.31 support and boatloads of other stuff it can do. As mentioned, I've been testing WLED with my current LED boards and it's been working perfectly. There is, however, a slight caveat if you wish to use the ESP32. The pre-compiled version of WLED uses the same GPIO pin as on the 8266 and that's GPIO2. But that doesn't really work on the ESP32 boards since the onboard LED is connected to GPO2. I've made a very quick change in the code and then made a pre-compiled binary where I changed the pin to GPO16, which is equivalent to the two position of the jumper on the Quinn LED Dig Uno. I'll have a link to this pre-compiled binary uh, somewhere in the description and on the quinlled.info page, but that will quickly um, become an old version and I've talked to Air Cookie and he's going to look into being able to change the pin you wish to use for the ESP32 easier than having to change it in the code and doing a manual recompile. So if you've been looking for a simple addressable LED solution for your project or home, 
WLED is excellent. If you then want to do some form of permanent install, I highly upgrading from a breadboard based solution to something like my Queen LED Dig Uno model. Next to being easier to use, it's also a lot safer. As mentioned, everything about these boards and how to build it yourself can be found on quinnled.info and will of course be linked in the description below. If you have any questions or comments, well, leave them in the comments. Or if you like these kinds of tutorials and videos and stuff about LEDs and wiring them up, maybe subscribe to my channel. And if you want to have a little bit more in-depth discussion, I also have a Discord server, consider joining there. So, I'm Quinder from Intermittent Technology. I'm hoping to see you guys back in the next video, and uh, see you then. Bye-bye.